Come here, little girl, you want some candy? UPS, how interesting. Someone isn't used to being homeless and stuff like that. I'd rather them have a trailer. I'm used to sleeping on the concrete. I wasn't expecting to be emotional like this. A place where you can go if you're homeless. Slab City is an entirely off-grid community, about three hours outside of Los Angeles. On the last two weeks episodes, I met with mm -hmm. Slip, Nova, and Lola, who all opened their arms and welcomed me into the Flamingo Camp. So that was dumpstered. These are dumpstered. You are more than welcome. Okay, cool. That little shack with the t-shirt on it, Uh huh. that is our shitter. Today, we will spend a bit more time with Van and the rest of the campmates to see what a normal day at Flamingo Camp looks like. I don't want you on camera if you don't no, want to be. Okay. I was told about this. Oh yeah? I'm, I'm Matt. Nice to meet you. I, I like your makeup. It's so cool. I love your Yeah, it changes every day. Does it? Mm, yeah. I, I mean, they, they kind of stick with some pinks and turquoises, but you Well, I just whatever the look is. Let me make sure, yeah, I can, I'm going to make sure it's on camera. I did this based off of the shirt, and then I went to the hot springs this morning, and then I went Yeah. You see the Yeah, it was good looking. It's like watercolor. That's what I like about it. It's so cool. I look like a painting. because of my sweat. I like it. It was meant to be. Hot springs. 30 bucks just for a lock or a room. Oh. <laughs> what is it? Brandon. Tag for Steamworks. Steamworks. Yeah. What is Steamworks? A place where you can go if you're homeless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? No, it's just no. It's like a spa. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a spa or something? They or? looked at my ID and they're like, X. <laughs> and I was like, I have a penis. And they're like, okay, come in. It's, it's, a, it's a gay spa. Oh, cool. It's close to here. They, it's a it's a uh, a chain. Oh okay. So there's some in Seattle. And you can sleep there. So LA. You got it. Well, there's rooms. There's rooms. You're to supposed do stuff. to just fuck. Yeah. <laughs> but I sleep. Good for you. Get your money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> Get your money's worth. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, and they have hot tubs. Hey, hi Matt, it's nice to meet you. Nice I've to meet you. Seen a couple of your videos here at Slabs. So oh, thank you. you. Might have commented on one, but I appreciate that. Thank you so much. What's your name? Van. Van, nice to meet you, Van. Yeah, thank nice you. To have you here. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. As a transgender person, I grew up in a little cornfield of a town back in Illinois. Kindergarten here. 12th grade there you just walk down the hallway and you graduate you know yeah. when I was like four or five years old I had this fantasy because we had a lot of Amish I had this fantasy like I'm gonna run away and I'm gonna go live with the Amish and I'm gonna grow up to be an Amish man and I'm gonna have an Amish wife and Amish babies I grew up in a Pentecostal church men were in charge of the women the women were subservient to the men and women had long hair couldn't get their hair oh my god I was cutting my hair all the time things about sexuality were very different as a child a little girl is masturbating. She's like, shame, shame, shame on you. A little boy gets caught masturbating. Oh, isn't that cute? He's mm. growing up. You better not have no babies. Yes, <laughs> you know? Yes, <laughs> yes. Girls did get treated differently than boys. Like, I remember my brother, you know, me and my brother were babysat by this person. And this person says, here, Walter, my brother, here's a few dollars and here's some cigarettes. Go down and play some arcade games downtown. Mm. I didn't get no cigarettes or money to go play arcade games. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. so I did see the difference of like how I thought being a boy would have been better for me. My parents were married and divorced and married and divorced. So it was always like I lived with mom or I lived with dad. And a lot of my classmates had affluent or what I considered affluent parents. You know, the principal's son was my classmate or the people that hired my brothers and sisters to detassel their corn with their daughter was in my class. I was the stinky kid. I was the kid with cooties. Nobody wants to sit with me. Aww. I'll be your friend, but don't tell my, nobody at school. My mom got tired of me skipping school, stealing, lying, I smoking cigarettes. I'd like steal people's cigarettes, steal money to get cigarettes, suck dick to get cigarettes. I mean, mm. that was my candy. Mm. You know, hey, come here, little girl. You want some candy? I was actually suicidal and maybe even homicidal. I mean, I'd thought about killing him. And then I'm like, well, I'll just kill myself instead. But I think by the grace of God, it, you know, I wasn't strong enough to pull the thing back or whatever. You're so cute. How long have you lived here for? Just this season. I visited last season. Nice. Where's your, where's your setup? Right there? Yeah, the, the that red. 
Is this actually, I lived there before that was even part of Flamingo. So is that the kind of thing that people kind of shift around houses? Like you move, you move from there to. Yeah, oh, for sure. Sure. yeah like for instance, I've like I've stayed in like Yoda stayed in that little teardrop that. Uh, well, I don't think you've seen it yet. It's on the back uh -huh. the side, but like that little pink can ham, I've stayed in there. I just recently, like when uh, there was a, um, a questionable of me maybe having a COVID and whatnot, I quarantined and I was on the bus. We built the not lurp shack for me, but it's just it it kind of just switches around to whoever is in need the most and also whoever kind of does the most. Like I mean, like in other words, like if someone isn't used to being homeless and stuff like that, I'd rather them have a trailer and then I'll just stay in the shack, which is just I mean it's just clothes. And but I'm like, I'm used to sleeping on the concrete and oh, toughing it nice. out. But. It seems so healthy. Like is there ever a disagreement? It's like no, I don't want to move. Or is there anything like that ever? Or is it just all very agreeable? There's tension. Yeah, I, gonna, gonna, I mean, I, I, mean, I kind of got a little butt hurt when I was like, someone new got that good, good red space, and I, I like could, that because there's a loft, and da da da. They're like, yeah, but they're younger and they're not used to homeless. I'm like, yeah, that's right. I am used to just, just giving my car hearts in a sleeping bag, and I can sleep anywhere. <laughs> but I get it. Like that's a that's a human emotion to feel like you know. Oh, that, I don't know. I, I get where you're coming from too, for sure. Well, that and also it's more like I, I'd rather give a more comfortable space to people when they first come here. So then they can like acclimatize and get used to this kind of style of living. Whereas like, I'm, I've been here for five years. I'm, I mean, hell, I, I know enough people. If if I really wanted to stay in a couch on a bed, there are plenty other different RVs that people are just going knock knock. I need a place for a couple nights. Yeah. You know the traditional couch surfing type stuff. My mother was kind of like not around so my brothers and sisters were more like my mom and dad i'm doing whatever the, the hell i'm gonna do and then one day my mom says you're gonna do this or you're gonna do that where the hell you been last four years mm. i've been doing my own thing mm. now you're gonna tell me i gotta make my bed mm. it was real easy to say fuck you mm -hmm. you know and, and my mom's attitude about things is i'll knock you out and then tell you why i knocked you out mm -hmm. my dad would be like i will knock you out if you don't straighten up i'll give you a chance to straighten up but if you don't straighten up then i'm gonna fuck you up right so at least my dad gave me a chance to be like oh yes sir yes sir then you learn to become invisible like Shh, she doesn't hear you or see you she can't hit you <laughs> you know so it's just ugly i'm sure a lot of people could probably relate on some level definitely and i know some people feel like they can't talk about their stuff their traumas their childhood traumas um because there's a lot of shame based emotions like that's why i used to mutilate myself there's a lot of shame based emotions my spirit was in so much pain but people could not see it or could not talk about it so if you mutilate your body and you put that spiritual pain onto your flesh and be like look i am hurting you know, it kind of was like that translation for me. I, I went through dialectical behavior therapy, which really saved my life and helped me have a better life. And I've not mutilated myself in probably 17 years now. That's amazing. I'm 47, so I was, I was coming up on my 30th birthday the last time I mutilated myself. Congratulations. Well, thank you. I mean... That's huge. Yeah. It's like a commune. Is that the right word for it? Like a... It's a community. I just say it's a community. Yeah, a community. Like, for instance, you have the Oasis where it's a suggested donation of a dollar for coffee. And I don't have to pay funds because, like, when I was first here, I would, like, just walk around. Huh? Pick up like two handfuls worth of trash and I'd come at them at like 9.45 when they're like, all right, we're about to close, help drink us coffee. I'm like, hey, may I? And then they started giving me tasks to do around there and then they put my name out there and then I started digging holes for people and it's like, you're paying me by the hour to dig a hole. Don't you think I'm going to dig it quicker if I have caffeine? So it's, like, it's like, so that's what it is. People are like, oh, what do you do for a free cup of coffee? It's like, well, I don't. You just have to pitch in and help out. Like, I don't pay the money for it, but that's because... You work well, or you do other things. Yeah. Like if you need to poop, they're like, oh, what's your going rate? I really don't care. I mean, I'm probably underselling myself because it'll take me like five hours to dig someone's shitter hole, and I'm talking about a six foot deep hole, and I pretty much only get a, I'll get like about ten dollars an hour. Do you? Are you the one who does the holes for th this community's bathroom? Well, um, I mean, I'm Not I'm usually bathroom. whenever a hole needs to be d done, I will do. But like when we do like the shitters, we usually will like rotate. Like m me, Yoda, and we had another camp member, Gaia. We were more of the uh, the the labor force, uh, you know, or like case in point. There's something gross and nasty. I'm the one that's like, Lurf, there's a, a rotted meat. We need to throw it away. Could you do that for us? <laughs> and then, then there are other people that they're more. Uh, their skills are more organizing and cooking. And then other people are uh, more self reliant and they can uh, provide more things like you know the funds that they might need and stuff. UPS. Oh, it's UPS. I got it. Okay. 
Watch you bring my phone, that'd be crazy. UPS, how interesting. No, we get Amazon deliveries out here. I love it. It's pretty nice. That's convenient. Anything that UPS doesn't deliver, you can get sent to the post office. Like USPS and FedEx, I don't think deliver out here, but UPS does. Hello. Oh. Oh, you already got it, Lola. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Dino, you can't go in there. Dino. <laughs> Dino, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. He knows. Oh, he's getting a treat. I thought he was just going to run away with yeah. you. I was like. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can you wait a sec? Doc's coming. Oh, oh Dot. Dot. This is Dot. <laughs> hey bro, um, I was supposed to get a package at the post office today and the UPS guy says that they didn't, they, they were able to. My hope now is that people can talk about it. I am so thankful for you for being so open and sharing your story because it will help people. Like People will watch this and, and relate to you and your story. Don't shame me for what those bastards did to me. You know, all those years when I was, you know, being raped by the neighbor or the family member or whoever, we, I am, we are doing something bad. I'm smoking cigarettes, so I'm doing something bad. You know what I mean? I'm going, I'm skipping school, I'm going to the neighbor's guy's house because he's got a warm house and some food and lets me watch movies or Sesame Street or gives me some clean clothes or whatever. But on the downside, I have to fucking. But if I go home, I don't have food, I don't have clean clothes, I don't have a warm house, and I get beat up and I get fucked anyway. So <laughs> what choice are you gonna make, you know? I had to look at children my age, what like, if I saw a 10 year old and thought, what would I say to that little girl if she'd been through this or experienced that or done this and that? What would I say to her? What would I feel for her? Mm -hmm. And that's how I was able to heal my inner child. Oh, Sorry, I'm getting a little mean? emotional. What would you say to her? Well, I'd tell her that it's not your fault. You're not the one doing the bad things. Um, cigarettes is an addiction. I know you don't understand addiction at 7, 8, or 9, or 10, or 12. Addiction like candy. You want candy so fucking bad. I don't give a shit about candy. I want a cigarette. You know, that was my kind of addiction. What would I say to that child in that situation at 7, at 10, at 9, at 12, at 15, at 18, at 21, at 25? You know, I see 25-year-olds here, and I'm like, if I, yeah. I, and I'm able to say some of these things to the people here or whether they're here in Flamingo Camp or in the world in general that cross my path, you know. I'm able to talk to people in a way that I would have talked to my younger self if I'd known better. And in a way, it's healing my younger self. I'm so moved by your story. Sorry, I don't, uh, I don't know why. <laughs> Why are you sorry? I wasn't expecting to be emotional like this. I mostly have emotional peace about my past, you know? I mean, yeah, I still have nightmares and I still am angry and feel rage towards abusers and, but I've come to understand like the, the starvation or the lack or the, you know, watching my sisters get beaten on or, you know, all of my experiences. Oh, it's yeah. cute. There you are. All right, ready? I think we have one more episode of my time in Flamingo Camp, and I am so happy that you are all enjoying these episodes. I hope you're subscribed, and I will see you next Sunday.